Hello and welcome to another video in the module where we are talking about corporate level strategy. Now, this video is going to be about portfolio matrices. I have been thinking for a long time again whether I should go in details into portfolio matrices because it's really an extensive topic where there are a lot of interesting models to learn or whether I should just uh, shell, in a shallow way describe what portfolio matrices are. I'm actually again going for the second option because this course is meant to be beginner to intermediate business level strategy. So we shouldn't go in details into one such topic. Now, what are portfolio matrices? Imagine again yourself as being a corporate level manager. It's very likely that your corporate consists out of many small companies, out of many small organizations. Now, you need to have a nice balance of your companies. You should have some companies which are currently in loss, but have a very high potential for growth in the future. You also should have in your uh, portfolio some companies that are kind of a cash cows, that are giving you the profit month by month so that it helps you keep alive. Now, I'm already going into a portfolio matrix and this one is going to be a BCG matrix. What is the, uh, what is the idea of such a matrix? Well, it should help us to decide how should we construct the portfolio of companies that are under us if we are a top level management. So let's go for the BCG matrix. This is a picture of BCG matrix. As you can see, companies will fall under four different categories. Stars, cash cows, question marks and dogs. Where companies belong will depend on two axes, as you can see, market growth and market share. Let's begin with a star. Star is a business unit within a portfolio which has high market share in a growing market. The business unit may be spending heavily to keep up with growth, but high market share should yield sufficient profits to make it more or less self-sufficient in terms of investment needs. Question mark is a business unit within a portfolio that is in a growing market, but does not yet have high market share. Developing question marks into stars with high market share takes heavy investment. Many question marks fail to develop. So, the BCG advises corporate parents to nurture several at a time. It is important to make sure that some question marks develop into stars, as existing stars will eventually become cash cows and cash cows may decline to dogs. So, I think you can see the pattern within our BCG matrix. Let's continue. Cash cow is a business unit within a portfolio that has a high market share in a major market. However, because growth is low, investments needs are less, while high market share means that the business unit should be profitable. The cash cow should then be a cash provider, helping to fund investments in question marks. Now, lastly, dogs are business units within a portfolio that have low share in static or declining markets and are thus the worst of all combinations. They may be a cash drain and use up a disproportionate amount of managerial time and company resources. Now, you may be noticed when I was describing the model that we had the notion of business unit. So, it does not necessarily mean that we have several companies within our portfolio, but if we have within one organization, we're able to define a, a nice distinct business units, we can treat them through the BCG matrix uh, as if they were separate companies. So some business units should deliver uh, products which are very potential in the future, that they can yield a lot of profits. There are some business units which are not that great for us and so on and so on. So you see, it's not only about companies within a portfolio, but also about business units. Now, BCG matrix is maybe the most well-known matrix that I was able to find and it has a lot of value in it. However, it has certain risks and downfalls. Let's discuss those. First of all, you have defi definitional vagueness. It can be hard to decide what high and low growth or share means in particular situations. Imagine you are a car manufacturer. Now, 
what should you consider? Should you consider your national market? Or should you consider a European market? Or should you maybe even consider a global market? It's not that easy to set the boundaries for what a market is, where you are measuring your share, and also for what a growth is. How fast is this market growing? Should we compare it with another country? Should we compare it with motorcycles industry? Or what should we compare it to? So the defining of the axis is not that simple. Secondly, we have capital market assumptions. Essentially, the VCG matrix assumes that the capital or the cash can only come from internal sources, so that there has to be some company from which we are getting the cash, which is the cash cow. Now, we take this cash and use it to finance some of the high potential, but currently in loss companies. It's forgetting the idea that maybe we only have the question marks. Maybe there are some companies and some investors who have 40 question marks. Now, how do they finance them? Well, through raising the capitals, through further investments, issuing stocks, and so on and so on. So BCG Matrix has a little flaw that it has this capital market assumption. Now, the BCG Matrix is kind of unkind to animals. What does that mean? Well, you say that you have certain cash cows and you say that you have certain dogs, which are companies from which you are trying to only take cash and invest as little into them as possible because they are not going to be successful in the future. Now, this can become a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you look at a company and say, hey, this company belongs under the category of dogs, I should not invest into it because it's going to fail. Now, it is going to fail because you have not invested into it. So it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you say that these companies are going to have a certain future and you act upon it, then you just enhance the probability that the negative future will happen. So it's a little flaw and you have to be careful so that there is no self-fulfilling prophecy if you operate using the BCG matrix. And as I said, that is all for this video. I have explored just one portfolio matrix. I hope it gave you the basic idea of what these are and I'm looking forward to see you in the next videos.